Uh, I thought it would be a good idea to give you a look at the winder I created to allow me to wind these coils with the core. As some of you, if you've been winding Bedini coils, you might have used something similar to this uh, to wind your coils. Uh, this is uh, what you can use to wind like a Bedini coil, something like that, where these guides hold it in place and the, that holds the center fits over that and then after you wound the coil you can insert the welding rods into the core after you've removed it from this device. You might be winding them without the welding rods inside and not sure how to do this. Well what I did is I built this winder here that basically this is adjustable and you can adjust the tension so it has a plate which clamps onto the front face of the coil and uh, that allows you to wind the coil and, and it doesn't have anything to do with the core so uh, this is kind of a universal design here so I can wind different size coils. So basically the design is like this with the half round piece of polycarbonate ground round on both sides and then taped with electrical tape. So the core is the transformer plates from the center of a transformer. So in this design allows me to wind with this winder with the core I don't need a, a shaft to run through the center of the core how this works is it fits into this winder like this you can see that allows you to wind a coil without um, needing a shaft to run through the center um, and then you lock it down with these set screws here to tighten this up this is basically a clamp this locks into the polycarbonate plate that forms the coil um, housing is wound clockwise uh, when I twist all the wires together they're wound clockwise and when I put it in the winder and it's wound onto the spool it's wound counterclockwise I'm not sure if that makes a lot of difference but it's as a matter of uniformity that's the way it's done every time so pull the wire up because the control board's on the back so I just pull that up to that length and then when you this is where it's going to exit and we're winding it this direction which is counterclockwise so push it against the base and then start the wind like this now the first wind is a little tough I usually use a piece of plastic and I press down to get this in shape so I don't nick the wire I, I don't use anything harder than the copper wire so this allows me to get a lot enough tension on the wire I'll pull that up there so go ahead and wind the first wind and then I'll give you a look at what we're talking about It might be smart to use gloves. This gets pretty tough on your hand, especially if you wound about eight or nine of these coils. It can really tear your hands up. But because I'm only winding the one, um, I'm not going to wear gloves. So. As you can see, I, when I measured to make the center core, I made it so the windings would fit tight all the way from one side to the other and they wouldn't leave a gap this is pretty important that you figure out how many windings you know take a micrometer 
and measure your windings when they're twisted together and then multiply that until you get the distance and you'll know how many windings will fit exactly at your core and this makes a, a nice tight wind so when you get to the end you just make sure it's tight against the edge and if you pull tension on this thing not so hard you're going to pull it out of the fixture but you put tension on it and guide it with your finger it's easy enough to put a good tight wind on the core coils wound and you can see there's there's only three or four wraps rows of wires in the core here so it's it's not really a big coil um i know the bedini coils a lot of people are building coils that are hundreds of feet long and basically if i was trying to capture a lot of radiant energy i could see the point but um this design i'm that's really not an issue this is one that's assembled here so as you can see a little gap for the control board and then it's just bolted to the back at two points there's a little piece of copper plating in there to solder the all the diodes and the return wire to so uh, this is a, a new modification uh, the, the new ones running at 4.7 kilo ohms on the trigger so what I did is I set it up so I could easily change out these resistors so I can change the value sample without doing any soldering. Okay, the key to the assembly of these boards that I'm mounting on the back, Waco, Waco connectors, um, part number is 96. Basically this little connector, the chips, you can see here, the chips are mounted across the back in that connector and then you know this is the return where the diodes get connected the ground and then the trigger loops so it's fairly easy to set up you know with that connector it just makes it real easy to wire one of these up fairly quickly so so it'll come off of that tie into that and that will allow me to then loop the trigger like that so the wires run around off of that trigger. They're just tied through one of the little connectors and then looped like that.